Hello everyone. In today's video, I thought it would be interesting to review the evolution of the Earth Alliance ships. Throughout the Babylon 5 series, we got to see different classes of vessels and designs. Just like every sci-fi faction out there, the Earth Alliance vessels are unique. Their ships are simplistic and rigid. Before the Earth Alliance first encountered other aliens, their ships could only travel throughout their own system. Once they encountered the Centauri, the whole galaxy became a possibility. In the beginning, a majority of their technology was bought from the Centauri, the Narn, and other alien factions. But instead of reusing them, the humans improved them and made it their own. For viewers that haven't watched my Earth Alliance fleet review, the Alliance first galactic attack ship was basic and had very similar living conditions to a U-boat during World War II. The vessels were cramped and life on them was difficult. The average time these ships could be in active duty was only one month. One of the first vessels introduced into their fleets after they encountered the Centauri was the Artemis Heavy Frigate. Originally this vessel only had plasma guns and a prototype version of the Interceptor. A majority of the Alliance ships were heavily armored which allowed them to take incoming fire while its weapons did little to no damage. Once the hull was penetrated, the ships fell apart quickly. Later versions were built with real guns which improved the ship's offensive abilities. The Alliance eventually created the Olympus class which was supposed to replace the Artemis class. The Olympus was still cramped and only could last in space for one month before needing resupplies. The only improvement this ship had was having rail guns. This weapon helped even the odds against raiders and other alien factions that surrounded the Earth Alliance. The main issue the Alliance had was their ships had terrible defense capabilities and relied on fighters to help defend them from attacks. The main issue was none of their main attack ships had the ability to hold fighters. To help counteract this issue, the Alliance created the Avenger class, which was a carrier. The carrier also helped protect the fighters from hyperspace because original versions were not designed to operate in that environment. Before introducing modern energy weapons to their vessels, the Lions relied on weapons such as railguns and missiles to protect their territory. Eventually they perfected interceptors which helped protect their ships from attacks. After having multiple victories against their neighbors, the Senate granted funding for the Earth Force to develop and create the next generation of vessels that would be eventually be tested in the Delgar War. The two main vessels that were created are known as the Hyperion and Nova class. For a while, the Hyperion was the main vessel used on the line during conflicts. The ship was well armored and had a wide array of variants built to be used for every mission needed from the Alliance. With the rise of the Narn aggression, the Earth Alliance started working on another vessel that could challenge more powerful factions like the Narn. The Nova class was considered the Lion's ultimate weapon and played a key role in their victory against the Delgar. The ship had 18 cannons which were short range weapons. When the vessel got close enough, it could rip apart most younger races capital ships besides the Membari and maybe the Centauri. The main focus for the Earth Alliance during that time was to build a vessel that could create its own jump point, hold fighters, and obtain enough firepower to go against dominant factions. Even the Earth Alliance fighters have improved. Older fighters were unable to survive in hyperspace and couldn't last long in space as well. Newer versions were designed to operate in hyperspace and last longer. Even though the Earth Alliance finally got to the stage where their vessels could compete with other dominant factions within their galaxy, there was still a major weakness with their vessels that could be used against them. The crew members that operated the ship lived in zero gravity, which shortened the time their ship could be in active duty. If the Alliance created a rotational sections on their ships that produce artificial gravity, it would increase the time the crew members could operate in space. The Alliance did possess the technology to create artificial gravity before they created the Hyperion class, but they realized it would decrease its maneuverability. With technology improving, the Omega class became more of a reality. It has a very similar design to the Nova, but it contains long range weapons as well and a rotational section in the middle of the vessel. The Omega has the ability to fight offensively and defensively when needed. The vessel is also able to hold a great amount of fighters and contains advanced weapons and technology that was taken after the Dilgar War and bought after the Earthman Bar War. 
The Omega class was supposed to fix three main problems that Earth Force realized during the war against Membari. These problems were that their vessels couldn't be active for long periods of time, the ships lacked adequate fighter support, and the last problem was that they had outdated targeting systems. Even though it doesn't have the ability to destroy Charlotte and Cruiser, it does have the weapons and the ability to destroy a Centauri capital ship such as the Premise. Granted, it would be challenging for them to destroy a Centauri capital ship, but it is a possibility. After the creation of vessels that could hold fighters, carriers were becoming obsolete. What helped keep carriers alive was the realization that they needed a vessel to pick up fighters that were stranded after their main base was destroyed. To solve this issue, they launched the Poseidon Supercarrier, which would be able to pick up fighters that were stranded. The ship was able to hold a lot of fighters, but it had a weak armor and it was an easy target to be destroyed. Due to the expense of building them, there was only a few of these ships created. 13 years after the Earth Mumbai War, the Alliance went through different phases when it comes to vessels. They made a commitment to return back to power, and to make sure they were never caught off guard again, they launched the Explorer class, which was a small city in space. The vessel was tough and it was capable of surviving in the outer rim for years. The main idea behind the ship was to explore as much territory as they could. The Earth Alliance theory was, any races that they came across during their journey, the Explore class would be able to evaluate them and determine if they were a threat. And if they came across any dead planets with forgotten technology, it would just benefit the mission even more. The Explorer class was placed in charge of creating jump gates in the outskirts of the Outer Rim and managed the old ones. This allowed the Earth Force to have a presence on potential planets that would benefit the Alliance in the future. Towards the end of the 13 years, Earth Force released a prototype fighter called the Thunderbolt, which was able to operate in space and in the atmosphere, which was an ability that the Starfear did not possess. The Earthline ships improved by great margin once they got their hands on Shadow technology. This led to the creation of the Shadow Omega. The Shadow Omega, or also referred to as the Omega X Vance Destroyer, had the same design as our normal Omega, but possessed Shadow Bio armor and weapons that could damage Membari vessel. Even though the ship was powerful, it didn't stay part of the Earth Alliance fleet for long, since the majority of them were destroyed and they relied on shadow technology, which is something the Earth Alliance couldn't build on their own. Once the Interstellar Alliance was created, Earth Force finally got to a point where they can build a vessel that was capable of taking on a Mimbari vessel or a White Star. With a new trade agreement and technology exchange, the Earth Alliance was able to develop a ship called the Warlock, which was able to produce artificial gravity without a rotational section. The armor on the vessel was able to take more punishment than past vessels, and the weapons was actually able to cause some real damage to vessels that couldn't hurt before, such as the Membari. It appears that the Alliance only improved their vessels once they go through a difficult period of time. The majority of the ships were built due to reacting to past conflicts. Once the humans got to a point where they almost got completely destroyed, they realized they should be building ships based on potential risks. I'm curious to find out your thoughts about the evolution of the Earth Alliance ships. Let me know in the comments section below. Also, let me know what other factions do you want me to review next. If you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe. And to keep yourself updated with my channel, then please select the notification button as well. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy these other two videos displayed on the screen. For more sci-fi content, then please follow me on my socials. Thank you for watching Utopian Broadcast, and I'll see you next time on my channel. Thank you.